Welcome to this lesson. In our previous lesson, we looked at the SI conventions and decimal multiples and submultiples. In this lesson, we are going to look at diversity of living and non-living things. At the end of the lesson, you should be able to explain the relationship between living things and non-living things. And also identify the life processes that all living things undergo. Now, when you look around, you see a large number of items, some living, others non-living. So some of the items you are likely to see is other human beings, which is an example of a living things, birds, insects, and the likes. You are also likely to find trees and tables and chairs. And of course, the tables and chairs are also examples of non-living things. Now, before we continue, I would like you to classify the following into living things and non-living things. So you draw a table, living things in one column, and non-living things in another column. Like you tell us birds, fishes, cars, trees, the sun, desk. Are they living or non-living? If some of them are living, and others non-living, tell us which ones are living and which ones are non-living things. Now, relationships exist largely between living things and non-living things. So for the human beings, the tables and the chairs that we've seen being non-living, and human beings and living things, we see that human beings can, a human being can largely sit on a chair around a table, either eat or write or learn. And this gives a classical ex ex uh, example of a relationship that exists between living things and non-living things. But other relationships goes beyond just people sitting around a table. Because all living things become non-living things when they die. So a living thing at the point of death and beyond becomes a non-living thing. Also, some living things or some living organisms break down dead organisms and form mineral salts. So dead decaying matter can be broken down by tiny microorganisms to form non-living things, which are mineral salts. Also, both plants and animals depend on food and other goods for survival. Food as we know it is a non-living thing. I mean, if it was a living thing, it would probably be screaming when we eat food. Because it's non-living and humans largely feed on food, it's also another classical relationship that exists between human beings as living things and food as a non-living thing. Now, let's look at the main differences between living things and non-living things. And in differentiating living things from non-living things, we use what we call the life processes to differentiate between living things and non-living things. And there are seven main life processes. Movement, reproduction, sensitivity, growth, respiration, excretion, and nutrition. Now, we use a mnemonic to remember this with ease. So you can use the first letters of each one of them. So M for movement, R for reproduction. In some textbooks, they bring the first R as some respiration, in which case the second R will be reproduction. But for the purpose of this study, the R here is reproduction. The S is for sensitivity. G for growth. The second R for respiration. E for excretion. And N for nutrition. Now, if we want to say this thoroughly, then this becomes Mrs. Green. And some other ones look at it as Mr. Niger or Mr. Niger, whichever way. We know that there are seven main life processes, and all living things exhibit this at one, during their growth and development. And they are so referred to, they're referred to as living things because then they undergo, living things undergo these processes continuously throughout their lifetime. 
and that is why they are life processes. Now, Simon, what is another name for the following life processes? Movement, sensitivity, and nutrition. Now, in this lesson, we started a discussion on the diversity of living and non-living things. We made an attempt to classify things that we find in our environment into living things and non-living things. We've also seen the main differences between living things and non-living things in the form of the seven life processes. Movement, respiration or reproduction, growth, sensitivity. Then we have the other are being either respiration or reproduction, depending on which one we list first. Excretion and nutrition. In our next lesson, we're going to continue our discussion on the diversity of living and non-living things. See you in the next lesson.